Tonight, the Home Affairs Minister Herman Gil Francis expresses shock over the recent industrial impasse involving fire officers. I was a little taken aback and very surprised at the action taken by the fire officers. The fire service strike has been regarded by many as the reason why one woman tragically lost her baby in a mall over the weekend. And Prime Minister Alan Shastley admits that he is utterly embarrassed over recent figures released and has every intention of getting them up. But we have got to find a solution to this problem. The details of these stories and more are coming up. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovely and Amy Joseph. If you were thinking that one weekend would assuage some of the issues from last week, namely the strike action by the Fire Service Association, then you would be wrong. The industrial action continues to make headlines. However, this time around, government ministers have their say on the issues. I'm Lovely St. Amy Joseph. It is Monday, the 18th of March, 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 Nightly News on Hot 7 TV, Flow Channel 117, and on KISS FM 105.5 and 105.9. The fire service remains on strike, which has not only disappointed the Home Affairs Minister, but has surprised him. The Home Affairs Minister, during a press conference, expressed his absolute shock that the fire service officers would take on strike action, blindsiding him when, in his mind, they had a great working relationship. Rochelle Gonzalez begins our news coverage with this report. Herman Gil Francis has revealed that he was left blindsided by officers of the St. Lucia Fire Service Association, who on Wednesday, March 13th, proceeded to down their tools and take strike action against the government. Francis said he was a little taken aback and surprised by the actions of the officers, especially since he had a strong rapport with them. The Home Affairs Minister said the officers' actions carried serious consequences. I'm very, very surprised that we would take this sort of action without even having a discussion with the minister. I mean, yes, the, 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 some of the issues of the fire service is pertinent and pressing and must be addressed, and we will address it. But when you have, none of these issues are, non, are life threatening. But when you can take action, and some of the things that might occur be, because of you withdrawing your services are life threatening. Over the weekend, we had a gentleman trapped in a vehicle, okay, and the fire service responded, but because of lack of manpower, they had to use other persons. Francis said he is on record advocating for the well-being of the officers to the best of his abilities and thought that he stood on more amicable grounds with the officers of the association. For the last two years, we have employed 80 fire officers, 50 officers have been promoted, including have actually making a, a fire chief and a deputy. If you remember the impasse in 2014 after the Commission of Inquiry, there was a hiatus and four years we had an acting fire chief. We have corrected that. We have an actual fire chief now and a deputy. Several officers have received specialized training both locally and overseas. Unprecedented. Never before has that number of officers been able to go overseas and train in. All stations have been renovated and safety procedures have been enhanced. Um, furniture and equipment were given to all police stations. As a matter of fact, when we did the Sufre police station, on the day the station was being handed over to the police, to the fire chief, um, the president, Mr. Shane Felix, was at that station having a meeting with some of his um, officers. And he was so pleased with what he saw that I told him that you realize that the government have expended all this money and we don't even have the money to buy lunch for the minister. So why don't your association give the minister some lunch today? and they actually paid lunch for the minister. With that said, Francis took the time to commend officers who responded to the calls of duty. I want to thank the fire officers who were not on duty but somehow got the information and turned up in plain clothes and assisted. Those officers who have stayed for the last few days on, on duty, I want to thank them for their services and I do hope that after the meeting today with the GNT, I think, that um, things will return to the normal. As of Monday morning, fire service officers remained on strike. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez.
Now, Minister for Labour Stevenson King says there will be repercussions for the recent decision taken by the St. Lucia Fire Service Association members to strike as they were in direct breach of a signed collective agreement. In the midst of a brewing standoff between the government of St. Lucia and the St. Lucia Fire Service Association, Labour Minister Stevenson King has deemed the strike actions taken by fire officers as unlawful and said persons will be held accountable. During a Monday morning press briefing, King addressed the ongoing strike, which commenced on Wednesday. He said officers who partook in the strike action breached an important agreement. From all indications, until I'm advised otherwise, it would appear that the association has violated the collective agreement. Because in the collective agreement under Article 32, which states grievance procedures, it says there that when any grievance arises, there shall be no interruption of work or other violation of this agreement of any kind on account thereof, but the same shall be settled as promptly as possible in the following manner. So it is to determine whether the officers have indeed violated, as I say, the agreement, which I believe they have, okay? Uh, because it calls for not interrupting the work of the fire service. And that is necessary in this agreement because the labor code is very silent on such matters and in fact does not apply to the public service and such protective and essential um, protective services. King revealed that he indeed read a notice of strike action, which was written by the association last week. However, he said the contents did not warrant strike action. The letter, he said, wasn't written to him. Instead, it was addressed to the permanent secretary in the Department of the Public Service. I thought that the contents of the letter, though indicating a withdrawal of their labor, did not necessi um, necessarily um, call for a uh, a conclusion or a classification of industrial action because there was no basis in that letter to indicate that there was really industrial action. However, the letter drew into the mix of things the issue of what I consider to be old wounds um, dating back 1996, matters pertaining to um, administrative issues, uh, grievances within the administration of the fire service and matters already addressed by the commission report the commission report which was done uh, sometime after 2012 when the government indicated there was a need to conduct a commission of inquiry the Labour Minister said there will be consequences to the actions taken by the officers, including disciplinary action. There seem to be quite a number of matters to be resolved, including a number of disciplinary actions and other shortcomings within the department, whether they are the fault of government or the fault of the employees. All of those matters, disciplinary and otherwise, my belief is that we need to resolve them once and for all so that we can have a clean slate and to move on. King said he is hopeful that coming out of a Monday afternoon meeting between the government negotiating team and the Fire Service Association, that officers will recommence their services as soon as possible. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. While the government ministers spoke on the matter, fire service personnel minutes away were engaged in a praise and worship session at the CSA Center in a show of solidarity. This action is in keeping with their continued efforts to bring about change in the fire service department as well as to uproot deep-seated problems that plague the workforce of the fire service. Solange Alfred reports. As the nation moves into the sixth day that the St. Lucia Fire Service Department is operating of skeletal staff as a direct response to what members say is a 40-year backlog of unresolved issues, the nation is certainly feeling the backlash of their noticeable and prolonged absence. The department, however, has sought to hold a praise and worship session to show support to one another. Chairman of the St. Lucia Fire Service Association, Shane Felix, is of the opinion that unity will continue to motivate the members of the SLFS. This is really for um, 
fire officers to continue to show solidarity for what is happening. Um, we agreed for us to gather at the CSC Center this morning um, for a session, you know, praise and worship session um, to show solidarity and again to draw strength from each other. We have a guest speaker who will be speaking on uh, motivational um, issues and to keep us motivated in terms of what is happening. Um, we also have uh, another union leader who will be present and to again show solidarity for what it is that we're experiencing at the moment. Um, so we're looking forward to everybody being there and to be able to you know, put our efforts, put our um, strength together and to make sure that we understand what is happening. It's critically important for fire officers to understand um, the necessity for us to be in this together. Felix went on to shed light on the many issues that plague the department. He notes that it remains a significant point of action to draw attention to the plight of the men and women of the St. Lucia Fire Service Department in hopes that change may come about. The St. Lucia Fire Service is at a point of crisis. Like the documents have said that there is a lack of trust in the management of the St. Lucia Fire Service. That the documents have said that the managers in the St. Lucia Fire Service continue to cover up for each other when it is that they've done you know, the various violations which I have highlighted in that document. The intimidation, the, the uh, victimization, suppression and oppression that is placed on fire officers. He added that other issues like the increase in pension from age 55 to 65 and removal of certain benefits, trained officers who remain on six months contract and untrained personnel ranking the same as those who are trained, further compounds the many issues that plague the department. The list, he says, continues. Yes, we are entitled to free medical attention, but with St. Jude's, what they're saying is the employer is not paying those fees to St. Jude's, and St. Jude's now is asking fire officers and protective service officers, as a matter of fact, to come in and they have to pay those fees before they can receive any kind of attention. Um, the issue of the, 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 the insurance and the Protective Services Compensation Act um, whereas the NIC is of a certain standard, um, when it is that persons are compensated, the employer's standards are below that of the NIC. Why is the employer holding the NIC to a standard but they themselves are below it? And, you know, it's just a number of concerns that, have, that we've been talking about for all of those years, and none of those issues have been dealt with. The chairman says he understands that all the issues will not be solved immediately. However, according to him, a deeper look into the issues must be had. With the gravity of the situation, Felix says that a higher level of attention must be paid to the pleas of the firefighters of the nation. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solej Alfred. The former Dallas police officer charged with the shooting and killing of 26-year-old Botham Jean in his own apartment appeared in court for a hearing Monday morning. Judge Tammy Kemp has set the date for the Amber Geiger trial. Currently, it's set for the 12th of August, but her attorneys are expected to request a change of venue so it's not held in Dallas County. In other news, the St. Lucia Fire Service Department is a five-minute drive from Blue Coral. On Friday, the 15th of March, that drive took approximately one hour and 30 minutes. And for a mother in labor, that wait would go on to be one of the longest of her life. Solange Alfred reports. A recent viral social media post indicated that over the weekend of the 16th of March, a pregnant woman having lunch at the Blue Coral Mall in Castries went through the first stage of giving birth when her water broke. The post reported that the ambulance was called numerous times before assistance was given. According to the post, 30 minutes after the initial water breaking, the baby was making its way out, with the woman utilizing the private restroom of the mall. However, when called, reps of the fire service department indicated that an accident in another location had taken up most of the human resource available. The post goes on to say that a total of 1 hour and 22 minutes surpassed, before the ambulance found its way to the Blue Coral Mall to assist the pregnant woman, who eventually suffered a miscarriage of her baby. Chairman of the St. Lucia Fire Service Association, Shane Felix, highlighted that the ongoing actions by the staff of the Fire Service Department are not intended to cause harm to civilians. However, he noted 
that situations like this one magnifies the very issues that the fire service staff are currently fighting for. And according to him, the lack of attention given by the government is allowing this action to worsen. At this point, for anybody to see that we fire officers are the ones responsible for what is happening is actually absolutely false because we have asked for this attention for, as I said, documented evidence more than 20 years um, in terms of this happening more than 40 years. So the government itself has shown that they understand the importance and the significance of what it is that we do by putting certain contingencies in place to make sure that the country is run with a fire department. You can't run a country without a fire department. We're not saying that we're out there to cause harm to anybody. We ourselves are solutions. We have families and so on. Um, the people who run the country themselves are solutions and they have their own families. So it's unfortunate that those things are happening, but it really is that the government is not interested in resolving the issues and rather letting this fester a little bit longer so that the public can begin to place blame on fire officers. In the end, the social media post highlighted the staff members of the Blue Coral Mall who were described as heroes for keeping the woman calm and helping her through that ordeal. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solej Alfred. When we come back, Prince Charles visited St. Tusha over the weekend and the event was met with great fanfare but left a few underwhelmed. And the National Workers' Union and the Bank of Nova Scotia have signed their first collective agreement.